Welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. As many of my colleagues know, throughout the years, my leather repair business has enabled me to do a volunteer construction work for a much greater cause. In any construction job, from the site prep to the footing to the top of the structure, there is a tool to use to establish an elevation or a level whether that be an optical or laser level to a carpenter's level, a masonry level, a string line level, whatever the case, there's a tool for the job. It is the same when we try to attain a flat or level vinyl repair, which is very elusive, by the way. So, there is a tool for each step of the way so that when we finish, we know we've constructed a nice flat repair. Would you like to see what those tools are? Well, Strap on all of your PPE and let's go to work. You don't need to know much about vinyl to recognize the poor quality in modern cars. These samples in the book are hard as floor tiles and the curled up edges are sharp. The plasticizer has been depleted. This is what we face in many modern automobiles. So this situation calls for extraordinary attention in our repair process. It will take a conscious effort to tame this brittle curled up edge. In this example, Heating with a heat gun may not be enough to soften the vinyl sufficiently. An excessive heat can melt away the foam underneath in a split second and leave a void under the vinyl. Using an iron directly can supply the kind of heat we need. Someone made absolutely no effort to tame this brittle vinyl and left the edges showing. And since the repair was done, the vinyl has even rebounded and raised above the level surface. The buyer couldn't believe the dealership would have this kind of work done. In our damage, you can see that this vinyl has lost all of its plasticizer, hence all of its elasticity. It wants to live in this raised up condition. So we have an arsenal of tools, including an iron, which is flat. We can iron through the Teflon paper. We can chill that with a flat chill bar. The graining paper is flat, and the iron that we use on it is flat, and we'll chill that with a flat chill bar. Then when we apply the vinyl repair compound, we can spread it using a Bondo spreader which has a straight or flat edge. Then when it comes time to heat with the heat gun, we can first of all press the chill bar flat on it. Maybe for the next level when we're ready for grain, put the graining pad with the chill bar on it, keeping everything flat as we go. So let's get started. The Teflon paper is designed for maximum heat transfer. Try to avoid the thin silicone pads here because silicone, of course, is an insulator. The important thing is not where the vinyl is when it's hot, but where it lies when it's cooled. So we need to make sure that we use the chill bar. So we've been successful in flattening the vinyl, although just a little bit below grade. And that's good because that leaves us some room for the vinyl repair compound. This is the UT100 self-igniter and we have it set for maximum heat. So if you have the UT200, you'll get even more benefit from that.
OK. For this repair, we've decided to use a repair compound that contains a fiber reinforcement. Will this work as good as the mesh? Well, we'll find out together. Because the iron was at full tilt, it's a bit too hot for the paper. So I'm turning it down to medium. At this point, I usually spritz it with water to cool it down, but uh, in lieu of that, I'm keeping it in motion on the paper so we don't have too much heat concentrated in one area until the heat is dissipated. Then we can let it uh, sit on the paper for a bit of dwell time so it penetrates down through the vinyl compound. Now I'm setting the chill bar on what I just cured and as I cure the next section I'm moving the chill bar forward and using it as a guide. Of course I'm in the way of the camera as usual So you can see here, we're just progressing along with the heat and with the chill bar. Let's do an inspection, real careful to see if we've cured the compound. And it looks like it's pretty good. We'll put another layer of compound on with the Bondo spreader. Of course, it's a nice straight edge and gives us an advantage of laying the compound flat. This won't require as much heat because it's a very, very thin layer. So every step so far has paid attention to using something flat so that we have control of our repair. Again, we feel we have everything cured and cooled, but it's good to peel back and inspect just to be sure. You can use the tip of your iron to melt down any flaky white edges as you see fit. We're going to clean the plasticizer off the surface and then get a guide coat of color. So the base of our repair is done. Now we need color just to see how far we need to take it because this is the cosmetic step. This is the finessing step. When using the ironing method, sometimes you'll have a halo effect around your repair or you might see that the vinyl has welted like if you get a burn on your skin where it raises up and the answer to that is to come with a thin layer of compound and use the heat gun method and now we're using the medium vinyl repair compound that we regularly use since it will feather much better than that compound with the fiber. Use the heat gun without a reducer tip. We want a wide heat application. 
we want to go from the repair all the way to the original vinyl and get a nice transition here. We have the grain that we want on the bottom and then we'll put the chill bar on top and get that nice and flat. So we're going to repeat that. Every place where we see a low area, we're going to put some compound. The Bondo spreader will ride on the high spots and it will deposit the vinyl repair compound in the low areas. We're going to apply more in this area. So the bundle spreader rides on the hills and deposits the bit of vinyl repair compound in the valley. So that's the secret to getting that nice and flat. The far end is what needs done now, and that ought to put us in good shape. We're going to stress removing the plasticizers from the surface before we put our color. Here I've started with a bit of texture, but it's not exactly the texture I want, so I'm going to pause and make sure my gun is acting correctly and setting it properly, and now we have the proper texture. I'm following up with the hair dryer so that uh, these droplets will dry more quickly. In the injection mold repair business, when they repair a grain mold, there's an area between the repair and the original mold. That's a telltale sign you've been there. They call that area the witness. So how do you avoid that being obvious? Well this is the way here. We put a light spray grain with our color from the original vinyl through the repair and totally blend in the witness area. Uh, now I'm atomizing better with the gun. This is our final color coat and we're drying it down too with the hair dryer. The aim here of course is to give us our satin look. Folks often ask how do I avoid a shiny spot where I've done the repair? Well as you can see just this proper method right here takes care of that without any trouble. So here's an up-close profile which doesn't give a hint of any repair. Let's try to focus in a little closer even. Now when you've been staring at a repair this closely while you're working at it, sometimes you're not happy. In those instances, just step outside the car like you're the customer, open the door, glance in there, and you see nothing. You'll feel better. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you have found this useful. Please hit subscribe and ring that bell and you'll be notified for part two of Flat Vinyl Repairs.